Hello everyone, welcome to a tutorial on how to build my Minecraft Beta 1.7.3 Passive Mob Farm. I designed this farm about four years ago and it works like a treat, and so I thought I'd make a tutorial so you can build a very similar farm in your world. So why would you want to build a passive mob farm? Well, in Beta 1.7.3 and earlier, Passive mobs uh, are not persistent. That means they will despawn. They spawn and despawn just like hostile mobs. And you can't breed them. So this means farming stuff such as wool, uh, pork chops, eggs, can be quite difficult. So this is why you need a farm like this. I, I built this farm for that purpose. For example, I've got all these uh, sheep here that I can shear. Wool. And all these cows I can kill for leather. And it's the best way of farming these resources because the only alternative is to uh, walk around an area with lots of grass and just hope you come across uh, the mob you want and get the resources you want from it. The primary feature of what sets my mob farm design apart from the rest is the fact that this is fully toggleable. It contains these five spawn pads which have been perfectly counted out. That water will flow over the top of them but not spill off the edge and completely shut down passive mob spawning. It also has lots of light to ensure that the grass doesn't die and also no hostile mobs will ever spawn. There's probably too much light in here but I, I recommend putting as much light as you can just to make sure that your grass isn't going to die. Before you go ahead and build this farm there's one thing to keep in mind is that you need to eliminate all valid spawn spaces outside the farm in order to get maximum spawn rates. What this essentially translates to is you need to remove all the grass, which I did here at my original base at Chocolate Bay. I call it Chocolate Bay because, as you can see, I took all the grass out. I used uh, your mum here to turn it all into dirt by tilling it and then letting the farmland revert back to dirt. While this method is simple without having to do lots of terraforming, it is, however, very ugly. Uh, a lot of people don't like it. But there is an alternative that you can build a classic style perimeter where you bulldoze a area down to sea level and that will also and remove all the grass that way. Here's one that I prepared earlier. This is a 320 by 320 perimeter. It's just your classic perimeter where I flattened down the land to sea level and flooded it. Uh, this is really the basic perimeter you'd need for mob farming. If you're insane like me and decide to make a void perimeter like I am elsewhere in this uh, Minecraft world, then uh, go ahead, but it's going to take a lot more effort. I recommend doing this because you'll also get a lot of the building blocks necessary to make this farm which I have over here in this chest. So, to build this farm, you will need a general building block. I'm using sandstone because I have lots of sandstone out here. You're going, in lots of, you're going to need lots of dirt for the farm to spread grass, to have the grass platforms, spawning platforms. You're also going to need light sources, so torches are pretty good. A glowstone in some areas, so you can use lava under glass. It's up to you how you want to design your farm. I would recommend glowstone because it's the easiest to handle, especially around water. And for the shutdown system, you're going to need a minimum eight sticky pistons or regular pistons if you want to cheap out if you can't find slime balls, a whole bunch of redstone dust, and of course repeaters. So first things first, grass. How do you spread grass in this game? We don't have silk touch in beta, so you've only really got two options when it comes to moving grass. You can use a piston to push a grass block uh, to a desired location. So, for example, I'm going to be building this farm up in the air. And so to get it up, I could just use a regular piston and push it up. Or you can build a dirt spiral if you don't have pistons for whatever reason or you just want to do it the old-fashioned way. I recommend doing it this way. So when grass spreads, uh, it's recommended to have as many like possible blocks for grass to a dirt blocks for grass to spread to. So what I recommend is this spiral pattern. So you do three like this, and then three like this every layer. So for example, this grass block here has the option to spread to here or here. And then if it spreads here, it then has the opportunity to spread here, here, 
or here, here. And so every level, you essentially got two uh, blocks of dirt available for the grass to spread up. Uh, this is a good to do before you actually build the farm. Oops, misplaced. So that way, as you're building the farm, the grass is passively spreading and you don't have to worry about actively being involved in, you know, getting the grass to move or sitting there patiently waiting for your farm to actually, <laughs> you know, work. Uh, remember to light it up, of course, because uh, mobs may spawn on it. Uh, you can place it against torches like this, which is what I'm trying to do as an easy way to get up. Um, and just keep going up until your desired height. And then when you get to that desired height, do a two or three wide block dirt path linking uh, the grass spiral to where you wish to spread the grass to. Because remember, the more blocks you have for the grass to spread, the faster it shall spread. Alrighty, so now we're going to start building the farm itself. So figure out where you want your spawning pads to be. Remember, passive mobs spawn 24 blocks to 144 blocks away from the player. Beyond 32 blocks, they can despawn. And beyond 128 blocks, they will instantly despawn. So you have to try and build your farm in that sweet, sweet spot of 24 to 32 blocks. Generally, you can go a little bit further if you want, but I would recommend building in that area. What I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be building... 21 blocks above my head height. So, for example, this is how tall my uh, character is. I'm going to go 21 blocks from there. So, y equals 67, so I need to go up to 81. And on the 81st block, I'm then going to start placing the base of the farm. Create a ring of blocks like this around a 2x2 two two hole. And then uh, I would recommend putting in ladders so you can get up and down because you, you know, if you run out of blocks, like I'm, I haven't got all the materials required to build this farm, so I'm just going to put a quick ladder in to get up and down. This hole is where the passive mobs will fall through in the completed farm. Okay, so now what we want to do is start building out the tray. So starting from one of the blocks next to the hole, count back eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do so like this. And now we want to make an area where it is eight blocks leading up to the hole. This is to prevent the need of sign spam, to prevent water from leaking down into the hole. So in order to do this, we need to create like a sort of rough diamond shape like this. Remember, water, when it flows diagonally, goes in a zigzag pattern. It doesn't go one, two, three like that. It goes in a diamond shape. So, build that out. An easy way to figure this out is to build out your four sides like this. So, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like so. And then just sort of do a triangle fill in between. Once you finish this diamond, what you need to do is go to the very edge like this and build out two blocks, like so. And what we need to start doing is start building a ring around the edge of this diamond, like so. Once you've completed this outer ring of the diamond, we then need to do another eight block flows. So what I recommend doing is going to sort of the midpoint. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, and then fill in the shape. And it should be noted, this will be the edge of the catching tray here, so you only need to do up to this point.
and it should look like this. Do it on the other sides, and then once you've done this, you want to then just square it off like this. So we have an extra bit up here. Once you've completed the square, put a rim around the outside to contain the water. This can only be, this can be one block for now, if you'd like. Okay, and like that, your catching tray should be complete. Uh, to make sure that you set it up right, place a water bucket in the corner, and the water should spread out like this. Excellent. So, yeah, so this entire quadrant has now filled. Of course, you need a water bucket in this corner, that corner, and that corner, and the entire thing will create a funnel which will push all passive mobs that fall into it into this middle hole. Next thing you want to do is start building up the sides a little bit. If you wish to decorate the outside with like windows or pixel art or something, now's the time to put it in or put it in afterwards. So just be careful because you may cause water spillage which will make water go down below and wash out torches, redstone and the likes and damage uh, your base if you have one. Okay, so now we get our four water buckets. Uh, obviously, you don't need four water buckets if you're low on iron. You can just make do with one or two and then create like an infinite spring up here. I just happen to have a lot of buckets, so that's why. Also, you may have noticed I relocated my temporary ladder over here because I'm now putting in the water and... Yeah, I don't want to have to like fight current the whole time when uh, I'm doing this, so... Placing in the water, and hopefully, if we built this correctly, this should be a perfect funnel. Okay, now that we've finished the catching tray, it's time to make the corner spawn pad. So what you want to do is you want to place your glowstone or glass in the corner. Uh, I should probably note, if you want to use torches under glass or lava under glass, you're probably going to have to move your spawn pads up two or three blocks. But if you're doing it like me, you can just put it right above the water, doesn't matter. Place your light source and then count out seven from there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then fill in to create a diagonal shape. 
Uh, by doing this, we're creating a perfect uh, eight block shaped spawning pad because when we have the shutdown system, water will land here and will fly out, will flow out evenly and uh, and will not spill over on the edge. The reason why we want to do this is that we'll mess up the water streams. Uh, so like for example, when we shut down the farm, uh, passive mobs can get stuck. Also, I like to put torches <laughs> along here. Uh, I try to spam as much light to prevent the grass from dying. And also, yeah, if I do that, that will wash off the torches. That's if you put the torches there as well. You can put lights in the roof. Alright, so after you finish your corner spawning pads, we're going to do the center one now. So, jump in and go to the middle. We're going to place a scaffolding block. And then we're going to scaffold up to the same level. It should be three blocks up. Yep, like so. And then create a 2x2 two two over the top of the hole in the, men in the middle. Um, we'll remove the scaffolding while we remember if we can. <laughs> okay, we have to get rid of that later. Okay, so then from your 2x2, two two, count out eight blocks from here. So one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what's going to happen is we're going to have the glowstone in the middle to keep the spawn pad lit up. And it's going to be here and the water will then flow down here and then out this way. So that's why we need it to be eight blocks. So that way, once again, much like the corner spawning pads, water spreads evenly over the... A spawn pad. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And much like the catching tray below us, we're going to create a diamond shape. Okay, so then place your glowstone in the middle. I just marked it with these torches so I remember where it is. And then we're going to put the torches on the outside. Okay, cool. So, if you want to quickly test to make sure you built your spawn pad right, place water on the glowstone here and hopefully, uh, look at that, it will perfectly flow across this quadrant of the pad. Same with over here and here and here. If you get any kind of spillage where it goes off the edge and knocks off the torches then you've done it wrong and uh, just you know recount out the blocks and redo it. As I've been building this spawn pad you notice that the grass has already spread up three vertical block height and it's only a matter of time until it goes to four. So this is why having that set up before building your farm is a very good idea. It just passively builds that grass over time. Okay, so now that you've completed the spawn pads, the farm is pretty much done for the spawn pad side of things. If you don't want to build a shutdown system, uh, all you have to do now is just fence it off or enclose it because uh, mobs will walk off the edge. Trust me, I've seen it happen many times. Uh, the only thing you'd have to do now is once the grass gets to the top here is to bridge across and allow it to spread to the pads and you have to put feeder strips. We'll do that later when the grass gets to this height. But if you're going to add a shutdown system, then uh, yeah, we're going to start enclosing the farm first. Okay, so once you put your fence up, we're going to start building the roof for the shutdown system. I'd recommend going up three blocks above the spawning pads so you have a two block height in there for the cows and sheep uh, by the way I should probably mention if you want to make this into a wolf spawning only farm it's actually quite easy uh, just place uh, a layer of glass or slabs or another non-solar block two blocks above the grass so you have an air gap and then you have the blocks and that should only spawn chickens pigs and also wolves if you're in the correct biome. Make sure you're in the correct biome to spawn wolves. Okay, so we're now going to start building the shutdown system. What you want to do is you want to mark out a ring around the corners of the spawn pads. 
and we're going to start building the redstone for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. This will hold the water. Uh, you can lay it out how you like, but this I'm going to make it like so. Put that there. Put a block there. Put that there. Okay, so for the middle one, we're going to need four sticky pistons, or regular pistons. If you're using regular pistons, you put them here so the piston arm would cut off the water. But I'm using sticky pistons because I just want to. Excellent. Now we just need to run our redstone wire around the outside. Now I should point out, I'm only doing like a basic wireframe design. For the redstone on this just because I uh, it's just want to make an easy one for this tutorial but if you want to make a full-on proper like designed roof for the top of your farm then uh, go ahead but it's not necessary if if you don't think um, remember to use repeaters to extend the signal so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Excellent. Also remember to light up your redstone too, because otherwise hostile mobs will spawn up here at night, like right now, and yeah, it'll get messy. Now that we've got the redstone wire in place, let's test it out, make sure it works. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to place the water now inside these... Uh, little glass containers. Uh, with this middle one you can make it, uh, you can just put one like that and that should be fine, but if you want to make it a 2x2 two two infinity pool then go ahead like that. Okay, neat. Oh, so now we've got all the water in place. It's time to test to see if the shutdown system works, so cut off the signal. And yeah, looking good. Uh, another reason why you need the railing, of course, is to prevent the water from spilling, because otherwise they'll just go off the edge and knock out all the torches down below. But yeah, there you go. Now your farm is can be successfully shut down uh, when you want. Of course, you don't want the controls up here on the roof. I mean, if you do, that's fine, but it's inconvenient to have to climb up a ladder or something and come up here. So instead, uh, we're going to uh, create a redstone torch tower to control the farm with a lever down below, and I just realized there wasn't a ladder there. And as you can see already, just that grass spiral alone is causing tons of passive mobs to be spawned, so uh, uh, it's going to be great when they actually start spawning inside your farm. So I'm going to pillar up here, uh, here, and an easy trick by the way, to doing a torch tower is alternating blocks, the block, and then the, like a filler block, then the block you want to place your redstone on, block, redstone, move that, block, redstone, block, redstone, and you get the idea. So then, you're going to start putting in the redstone torches. Go up, knock out your filler blocks, and just put the torches in. Okay, there we go. So we got to the top, and the, it, the redstone cut off. That's fine. If you want the default position to be on, I would recommend replacing this torch with a dust. Though I prefer that when my lever is down, then that means that the farm is running. And, oh. <laughs> wow, I just created a, a T flip flop there. Nice. Alright, so now that we've finished the actual farm itself and we're just waiting for the final layers of grass to grow up, I'm going to start building the piping underneath for the mob farm. Now, there's 
two ways you can go out about doing it. You can either just have them straight fall into an area and you can just manually kill them if you'd like or harvest them for their resources in the case of sheep. Um, you can just like put, have some kind of automated lava blade system, I guess. But the problem is our passive mobs have different hitboxes. So some mobs won't die or they'll burn up all their drops and others uh, will drop their items. But the best way in my opinion, is to sort the mobs uh, by hitbox size and farm them individually in their different ways. And this is how I did it in my base. So what we do is, we're at the bottom of the farm, this is the collection point, and we're going to build a 2x2 two two tube down, three blocks down. Just misplaced glass, be careful, because you can't still touch glass in this, of course. Um... It's very dark under here. I'm sorry if it's hard to see. So you go down three blocks and then we're going to do another block like so. Torch back and then another block like so. So what we're going to do is put signs here. Uh, signs here. And this is going to be the water blade that collects our chickens. Uh, if you do not know, chickens, uh, when they uh, fall, uh, they flutter down with their wings. And I don't have a water bucket. Be back in a second. Okay, I got my water. So when chickens fall, um, they flutter down. They don't take fall damage. And the best way to separate them is to put them into a... a using a water blade. So what we want to do... Do this, and then we'll put a stopper at the end just to stop the water from spilling out. And we we'll put the water here, create like a, a, a water blade so the chickens will fall in here and then go through this pipe. Excellent. Then we'll go down uh, three blocks below that. Uh, by the way, I recommend building lots of scaffolding uh, for this because going to be in the air a lot. Go down three, so one, two, three, and this will be where we start processing cows and sheep. So, like this, and we're going to do this. Okay, so I made myself a little work platform here. I'd recommend doing the same, but what we're going to do here, we're going to get our two signs. And, okay. So we'll do a 2x3 like this. Like a suit. And then we're going to get our two signs. Place one here. Place one here. Okay, so we, what we need to do is we need to place slab here, here, and then do a row of slabs like so. And then... Place our water at the back here. We're going to create a diagonal stream. And this is how we're going to separate pigs and cows and sheep. Because uh, cows and sheep are one and a half blocks tall. And pigs are one block tall. So what that means is we're going to... <laughs> Just falling in the background. Uh, what we're going to do is like this. Good to use a scaffold block when figuring out where you're going to place your glass. Do that. And once again, place a dirt stopper at the end here, just so we're not spilling water everywhere. Okay. Place the slab there again. And another dirt stopper. There. And then we'll take our water bucket and place it here, so it creates a diagonal stream. So what's going to happen is we seal this up. Are the pigs, and also wolves, if you're if this farm will be farming wolves, will travel... Oh no, I'm stuck, am I? But good. Um, we'll travel through the one block gap here, and we'll go this way. The pigs and, uh, sorry, the cows and sheep, since they're 1.5, about 1.5 blocks tall, will go, 
So how this separator works is pigs and wolves are less than one block, so they'll fit through this gap and go out here. Uh, cows and sheep are 1.5 blocks tall, about 1.5 blocks tall, so they'll go over these slabs and head this way. So for the pigs, and then we should probably, for the pigs, add a wolf separator. So if this farm is for producing wolves as well, uh, this is the uh, uh, other method you do. So um, first off, count out our water. So one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we might have to. Uh, we might have to. I don't have any slabs. I don't have any wood. God damn it. Okay, so we're going to put a slab here. I'm going to box this up, put a sign, and then what we're going to do, that's, then we're going to okay, this. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to create like a diagonal stream here. And we're going to place uh, solid blocks because we, what we need to do is place ladders. For the wool separator, we need uh, some kind of... Why can't I place... Can you not place against ladders? Oh, interesting. Um, so when it comes to separating pigs and wolves, wolves are actually smaller than a block and they can fit through this gap with the ladder. But pigs can't. So, like, you really, can you really just not place blocks up against ladders? Wow. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that in the slightest. So, um, we're going to have this diagonal water stream here. Like this. Um, separating the wools. So the wolves should go in there, and then the pigs should go down here. I don't think this farm in particular will produce wolves, but this principle will work regardless, I assure you, because this is what I use for the wolf farm, um, for the uh, wolf uh, spawning farm. So then we place our diagonal water, like so. Remember to seal it up. Okay, like a so, and then we're going to, can we pop down, excellent, so the pigs should then fall down here, and then you can send the pigs to where you want them to, I'm going to have them straight fall here, oh my god, <laughs> I keep misplacing glass, be careful placing glass, or be prepared to harvest lots of sand, because no way, other way of getting glass in this. God, I'm doing it again. I'm, I'm just trying to get this show on the road here. Then drop them pigs down. Okay, so this is where the pigs will end up. As for the wolves, what we'll do. Is we'll come up here and place a water stream this way sign here and can we yeah. Create a water stream to send them this way, and then they should be able to come over here. Can I? Yep. Pass some tubing. Of course, you don't have to make this tubing out of glass. It's just nice to be able to see through the glass uh, what's going on. And oh.
So wool should end up in here. Um, if if we do get any wools, I'm going to put a water break here. Get a water bucket. Because we don't want the wolves to be damaged if we want to tame them. them here. So now we'll deal with the cows and sheep. So with with cows and sheep, we can uh, do one of two things. We can kill them automatically for their drops. Or we can... Uh, I'm just I'm just trying to do this away without spilling water. There we go. Okay. So with cows and sheep, we can either kill them automatically for their wool and leather, or we can uh, simply uh, drop them into a, a holding room or chamber in order to harvest the wool to shear the wool. Because I I think that's the best method because when you kill a sheep you only get wool when you shear a sheep you can get i believe it's one to three but if you do the trick where you kill them and then shear the corpse just before it despawns you can get up to four i believe okay and then we'll place a water break here as well we'll do the uh shearing station method so then we'll just place a little fence area around okay so i just created a little fenced yard with a door because there's no fence gates in this version and uh yeah so the sheep and cows are collecting here and then you can kill the the uh cows and then shear and kill the sheep so that's sheep pigs and wolves dealt with with chickens um it's up to you what you want to do i find there's no much point harvesting them for feathers the really only use is eggs because you can get uh, zombie uh, zombies drop feathers in this version, so of course they're not much point. But I'll show anyways what we can do. Okay, so that's the drop down points. We can continue the pipe. Get rid of it. Get rid of that. And come down. Here. The joys of doing this and also redstone is that you really get used to parkouring in this game, because uh, otherwise uh, you're gonna just keep falling. Okay, and then you place like a water blade here, and that's a basic egg farm. You can create the proper room with the swirling water patterns that I have at my main base. But this should suffice enough for a simple mob system. Now, all we have to do is just wait. Well, first off, I'm going to remove the scaffolding. And then we just have to wait for the grass to grow up onto the farm. Okay, so I went AFK for about half an hour. And now the grass is starting to spread onto the first spawn pad. So I've started setting up these little dirt bridges to spread the grass over there actually I didn't this one um, I'll just do this once again two blocks try and spread it further and uh, faster I should say and now I can take down the dirt spiral so start removing this but damn it put the fence back this so yeah the grass is not even fully spread on the farm and already passive mobs are spawning like crazy so I've got cows in the cow pen we've got pigs in here um, I should have put a lava block in there to uh, get them to cook up and drop cook pork chops and I've got the chickens there laying eggs all those all the cows and yeah it's working great no wolves yeah i don't think wolves spawn in this biome unfortunately but if we did have any wolves they'd be collecting right here for us to tame okay and after some time the grass has completely spread across all the spawn pads 
So if you have temporary bridges connecting them together to spread the grass, now go ahead and remove them. And that is how you build your own passive mob farm. Uh, it's working like a charm. It's filling up with chickens here. So I've already been getting tons of eggs. And yeah, it works great. So, I hope this tutorial is uh, helpful to you. And you can build your own passive mob farms in the future. If you uh, enjoyed the video, uh, could you give it a like? Because uh, it took me a very, very long time to do this. Uh, over the course of two weeks. So, thanks for watching. And I'll, I'll see you next time.